Alright, hello everybody. Hope y'all are having a phenomenal night. My name is Vishal Satish and today I'm going to be talking to you about the commercial space industry. So, just to like kick things off, um, you know, ha how many of y'all wanted to become an astronaut or go to space at some point in your life? Yeah, like me. Yeah. Ooh. Cool. Ooh. I should be seeing more hands, but it's all good. So, okay. But all of those that raised their hands, right? How many of y'all still believe in becoming an astronaut? Still thinking that it's possible? Okay, one, two. Okay. Come on now, guys. We, we, our first speech was talking about tackling our own fears. So, hopefully, by the end of my presentation, I can encourage you that the commercial space industry is probably just as attractive, and maybe you could also go to space as well. But there's more to the commercial space industry than just going to space for yourself, than going as a tourist. And hopefully I can guide you through that through my, uh, through my presentation. Um, now, the commercial space industry, it didn't just begin on its own. I'd like to tell you how it all began. So first, we had, in, back in the 1960s, 1970s, we had the Apollo space program, where uh, created during the time of the Cold War, uh, during the time of the space race. So the Cold War, as many of you all know, was between the Soviet Union and the United States trying to show who has the better technological advancement. There's no casualty. There's no casualty? Oh, wow. Yeah, there's no casualty or anything uh, of significant loss other than just pure bragging and who was the better superpower country. And in doing this, a lot of tension was uprised. Uh, the Department of Defense was worried about uh, national security concerns and thus a lot of the federal, federal budget went into that. And then, in addition, we spent a lot of money on our space program. The Apollo program alone costed roughly $257 billion in today's, uh, in, in today's uh, money's worth. Back then it was $25.8 billion. Uh, now, with inflation and stuff, the value is equivalent to $257 uh, US dollars billion. And due to this, a lot of debt, a lot of, uh, questions came to uprise, why did we invest this much into our space program? And as a result, the space program started losing its funding. The federal budget, which used to have 4% uh, go, go to NASA, go to its space initiatives, now had less than 1% for its progress, its projects and research. And NASA had to uh, eliminate their Apollo 18, 19, and 20, their final three missions, in order to survive with a low stake, low cost program, which would famously become known as the Space Shuttle Program. Now in the Space Shuttle Program, we had pretty good success for the money we had. We got into lower Earth orbit and did a ton of space research available for civilians. And we were no longer doing this for a uh, military operation standpoint. And we've been stuck in this phase for fi roughly 50 plus years, to which we handed off to the commercial space industry. The commercial space industry owed to far much more money, far much more sponsorships, far much more projects, ideas, and university faculty wanting to contribute to the space realm. It's open to a lot more than what the federal government could have offered alone. And so with our current progress, we have Blue Origin, SpaceX, Lockheed, Northrop Grumman, and many more companies that sound like brands, just like how they're shoe brands for us. And so, in our future, we can expect to see, oh, I want to take a space, I want to take a space ride from this company versus that company, just like how we have airline tickets. With uh, SpaceX, we now have reusable rockets, like the space shuttle, but this time cheaper. Why? Because it's privately owned, and uh, they become more and more reliable now. We've started to move on recently. Axiom Space, not many of you all might know compared to SpaceX, the recent startups like Axiom have started creating their own private crews, to sending just regular civilians to space. Not only rich people, but just ordinary people who have a specific interest, specific, diverse, uh, contributable amount of skills. And we also have Crew Dragon, part of SpaceX, that sends American astronauts off American soil. And now they started sending Japan and Russian so, uh, astronauts as well to the International Space Station. So, 
In regards to our early future progress, going back to how I wanted to promote you to consider how you could go to space, how you could be an astronaut. Well, my one of, I keep going back to Axiom. It's a recent startup, recent, uh, it's, it's going in a new phase. And right now, after the ISS, ISS is only going to be there for roughly 10 more years, up, up until 2030. What do we do until then, right? How are we going to conduct our own space research? And to that, we have the commercial space industry. Right now, Axiom Space is trying to plan their industrial research. Industrial research in space might sound unrealistic, unheard of, but it's not doable. You will now have industrial engineers working, some regular civilian engineers in a commercial space station. Welcome to many, many uh, countries. And they're not the first. Northrop Grumman partnering with uh, NASA and other uh, space agencies is trying to create two space stations. So we can expect as more and more sta uh, space stations become available for our projects, we can also expect some to be open, perhaps for our recreational purposes. Right? So in the soon future programs, Jeff Bezos, owner of Amazon, who's also the owner of Blue Origin, is planning on creating multiple future permanent residents on the moon. And we've heard a similar story to that in Elon Musk's Mars's, uh, Mars settlement. And there we plan on exploiting a ton of resources on the moon. There's helium, which is known as lunar gold. And by going to other planets, by going and doing asteroid mining, or participating in, or like, in exploring what the universe can offer us, the value of materials, their composition, and you know, the markets will change. It's not just based on Earth, it's going to be based on what the universe has to offer and how fast we can get there, how soon we can get there. And one of, my, one of the most influential people in my life, uh, Dr. Terry Burks, uh, I read his book. In his book, he says how to, in his book, uh, titles, How to Astronaut, he soon believes that at a time in our lives, in our lives, that tickets to space will be cheap. It'll roughly be $10,000 for us to go to space. That might not sound as cheap as you'd like, but considering how much money goes into sending a pound of stuff to space, nowadays, it's very possible for $10,000 to be afforded and for, uh, for us to spend to go visit space. And to the right uh, is a luxury space hotel designed by Orion, Orion Scan here, my eyes are Horizon Span, Horizon, Horizon Span, sorry. And they plan on providing that recreational purpose I was earlier really talking about. We can go to space and have fun. Think about it, swimming pool without the water, right? And like I mentioned earlier, permanent settlements on Mars, thanks to Elon Musk, it's all looking very possible, very doable. Perhaps you could be a part of this. We could be a part of this, right? And Opening into this realm, looking into the space exploration realm, a lot of job opportunities are there that wouldn't exist here on Earth. Perhaps one I'd like to think of is space tourism. Being a tourist in space, it's hard to really explore what Earth has to, or what outside of Earth has to offer. There'll be people who will lead you into what to look at, what to see. You also have people, habitat engineers. You can't have people from Earth having to replace your house or fix maintenance issues. You'll have redesigned engineers, or re redesigning engineers all the time. There'll be new and new jobs. The jobs that we have here on Earth can be taken up to space. The markets overall will change. And right now, based on many new sites, the industry is looking at going over to a $1 trillion type of, uh, $1 trillion in revenue by 2040 in annual, in annual revenue, which is pretty big and it's new. It's welcome to change. We can invest in it ourselves. And currently, as of last year, we recorded four hundred sixty-nine dollars uh, dollars in revenue for uh, the commercial space industry in whole. So, with that, I'd like to conclude my presentation. I'd like to say uh, thank you for listening, and who knows, maybe you can pop in in your in your research, your profession, or just go to enjoy space for yourself. Thank you. I'm Michelle Sadish.